Hey man, thanks for checking out Billy the Kid Adventures. Join me as I discuss some obscure Cleveland baseball trivia. Moving on to some more obscure Cleveland baseball trivia, let's go back to 1939 for these next two items, asking first, who sang the national anthem for the home opener? Judy Garland sang the national anthem while she was in Cleveland doing a few shows at the Lowe's State Theater at Playhouse Square. Secondly, Cleveland Hall of Famer Bob Feller holds many records as our team's greatest pitcher, despite missing four prime years of his career due to enlisting in the Navy at the onset of World War II, and never regretting it. What was one of the regrets Bob Feller mentioned more than once? On Mother's Day 1939, Bob Feller was the marquee pitcher for the Indians while they were in Chicago. Bob's family, including his mom, of course, came on Mother's Day and wanted to see her son pitch. Unfortunately, one of Bob's signature fastballs was smashed right at his mom, hitting her in the face and sending her to the hospital, something Bob regretted for the rest of his life. Having mentioned arguably the best and worst Cleveland baseball promotions, what were some of the more unique ones? A fun and unique promotion I attended in 1982 was a baseball concert doubleheader featuring the Beach Boys, who delivered their good summer vibes to Cleveland's baseball fans. In 1974, I got the chance to see the incredible 69-year-old Carl Walenda walk the high wire with no net, 100 feet or so above Municipal Stadium in another unique doubleheader promotion featuring the Indians. Walenda walked across the stadium from foul pole to foul pole, and halfway across his high wire walk, 69-year-old Linda paused to do a headstand, much to the amazement of the crowd, including myself. Arguably the most unique Cleveland baseball promotion was the Terminal Tower Baseball Drop event. On August 20th, 1938, the Cleveland Indians partnered with the city of Cleveland to do a baseball drop from the top of the Terminal Tower, recreating the stunt that occurred 30 years earlier at the Washington Monument. In 1908, Washington newspaper man Preston Gibson bet a fan that a baseball could be caught from the Washington Monument. And sure enough, Washington Senators catcher Gabby Street caught the final toss out of 13 baseballs. In 1938, in an effort to promote Cleveland, the Terminal Tower, and the Cleveland Indians, an event recreating the Washington Monument baseball drop stunt was planned, whereby baseballs would be tossed from the Terminal Tower's observation deck to be caught below on Public Square. Indians third baseman Ken Keltner would toss a dozen baseballs from the Tower's observation deck to catchers Frank Pitlick and Hank Helf below. Keltner said that while he was aiming for the circle drawn on the ground, he could barely see it. To the catchers on the ground, the balls were barely visible when released and looked the size of peas. Here's the view Keltner had looking down from the observation deck. And here's the view the catcher saw, looking up, awaiting the baseball toss. Out of the dozen baseballs that Keltner tossed, each catcher caught one baseball. Some of the baseballs that weren't caught bounced six stories back up and the baseball's velocity was estimated 
at 138 miles per hour at impact, leading catcher Frank Pitlick to joke, it stung more than Bob Feller's fast one. Like any sports franchise, there's always a few, shall we say, interesting characters. How many of you know these next couple? Chico Simone's fear of ghosts and sleeping with lights on was often a fun topic of stories related to him. John Lowenstein was an eccentric player, and his anti-fan apathy club always grabbed headlines. Years later, he stated, no one showed up at the Apathy Club reunion because nobody cared. On the topic of interesting characters, who was Len Barker's special visitor at the 1981 All-Star Game? Len got a surprise visit on the mound for Morgana, the Kissing Bandit, in 1981 at the All-Star Game hosted in Cleveland. Closing out my section, on Cleveland's interesting characters. Who is Cleveland's career batting average leader? There are few baseball players as controversial and interesting as Cleveland's all-time batting average leader, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Babe Ruth called Shoeless Joe Jackson the greatest hitter I had ever seen. Which leads to our next trivia question. Is Shoeless Joe Jackson in baseball's National Hall of Fame? The answer is no. A few years after getting traded to the Chicago White Sox, Joe and several of his teammates were accused of fixing the 1919 World Series and banned from baseball for life. Joe was never eligible for the Hall of Fame, despite being one of baseball's all-time greatest hitters. In Cleveland, however, Joe's early amazing career led to him being a member of the inaugural class of inductees in the Cleveland Indians Baseball Hall of Fame in 1951. Unable to attend Cleveland's September induction ceremony, Joe was scheduled to receive his Cleveland induction honor on the nationally televised Toast of the Town show hosted by Ed Sullivan before millions of TV viewers on December 16th. Sadly, Joe died of a heart attack 11 days before he was scheduled to appear on the show, and the show was redone as a tribute to Joe. Decades after falling somewhat into obscurity, Shoeless Joe was reintroduced to new generations of baseball fans through several books and movies, including... Ray Liotta's iconic performance as Shoeless Joe in Field of Dreams. Continuing with the movie topic, what film was made after Cleveland's 1948 World Series win? Featuring many Cleveland Indians players, The Kid from Cleveland was a Disney-esque film featuring a very young Russ Tamblin, who later became best known as Riff, leader of the Jets in West Side Story. What movie was made about Satchel Paige? The obscure baseball movie, Don't Look Back, the story of Leroy Satchel Paige, features a young Lou Gossett and is based on the autobiography of the same name. Jim Tomey holds Cleveland's record for longest home run, which he hit out of the park. What was Tomey's record for games in a row with a home run? If you get seven, you're correct. Going back to Tommy hitting a home run out of the park, what Cleveland opponent also hit one out of the park? Babe Ruth hit a home run out of Old League Park back in the day. And continuing with more old-time baseball legends, what was Ty Cobb's batting average with Cleveland? This is a trick question. Ty Cobb never actually played for Cleveland, but did wear a Cleveland uniform when he came to Cleveland for a charity game 
on behalf of Cleveland pitcher Eddie Joss, who unexpectedly passed away. Cobb's Detroit uniform got lost in transit, and he wore a Cleveland baseball uniform for the event. And finally, what Cleveland teammates did a great job recreating the classic Abbott and Costello Who's on First skit. Sudden Sam McDowell and Hawk Harrelson did a super hilarious rendition of the skit. Thanks again for checking out Billy the Kid Adventures, my Cleveland baseball trivia series. Link for the much easier Part 1 trivia is below.